there are literally millions of objects up there in orbit flying out of control. They pose a risk to satellites and to astronauts. So what can we do? Keep in mind that this junk spins around the Earth pretty fast, around six miles a second. So it poses a very significant threat to astronauts and any future space travel, not to mention the satellites we already have up there. We've got about 16,000 objects that are maintained by the United States Air Force, but those are just the tip of the iceberg. There are more than 500,000 uh, size objects the size of a centimeter. You're, you're almost describing a, a garbage belt around the Earth. That's exactly right. So we've reached this point where uh, there's enough stuff in orbit that it will collide with one another. It will become the dominant source of debris in the future. The energy contained in a one centimeter particle hitting a satellite at that velocity roughly corresponds to an exploding grenade. Uh, so the consequences of such a hit mean a satellite failure uh, for larger objects, even satellite destruction and fragment generation, which again then has environmental consequences. And the only way you can reverse this process is to essentially bring down some of the larger stuff, the more massive stuff that's most likely to contribute debris. If we retrieve about five objects per year, and they have to be a select number of five objects, the ones that are most likely to break up and cause debris, and we do that for the next hundred years, then we can stabilize the low Earth orbit environment. Unfortunately, we don't know how to do that. Uh, at least we don't have the tools, the operational tools to do that. So the concept is to, uh, let's say, to mimic what the fishermen uh, do uh, in, on, on the sea and so to have a very large net to stay away from our debris and uh, net satellites that is stumbling and moving uh, freely and then from that distance to uh, uh, keep our net and you just try to wrap all over your, uh, your satellites you just try to wrap all over your uh, your satellites. You just try to wrap wrap all over your uh, your satellites, and then thanks to the motions of the satellites that is completely unknown and free, uh, you you have the nets that wrap in around uh, your object. So at that point we can uh, we can bring uh, the object that we wrap it wherever we want in space, uh, like we do with uh, with fishes in sea. Once we are sure we are moving like a single object, we are like, as if we were dancing but without touching it, uh, each other, we can move the robotic arms to grab the launcher adapter ring and then once we have this grabbed and, and, and we can also clamp another mechanism so that we can steer the, 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 the target orbit, the target satellite with two hands, let's say, so it makes it as easy to bring it down to the Earth and destroy it in, in, in the re-entry or in the South Pacific Ocean. Over decades, the, uh, the frequency of collisions might increase without human influence. That is a scenario that might render some regions in space unusable for spaceflight, and that will be a disaster for space. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't question too much about the, the space joint thing. Um, I mean, if you actually we should worry about ourselves creating the space joint, but, um, but the, at, at the altitude in question, there's really not, uh, not a lot out there. 